Hello Management 230 students, this is Dr. Robinson. I'm just um, doing a tutorial here on making contingency tables and inferring probabilities from them. So I've got one that is um, maybe a little easier and then one that's you know the, of the more challenging kind. So I'm going to work both just in this movie really quick and that way you can um, observe and pause and make a choice or um, learn by example how to do these. Of the people who shop at a convenience store, 75% buy milk. That's the first statement from this problem. So already I know a few things. First of all, I know that milk is an event and that no milk is not an event. Because if 75% do, 25% don't, and that means it must be an option in the system. Um, if I have a thousand people coming through my convenience store, 75% of those thousand people are going to buy milk. That means I've got 750 people buying milk. And, so, and this now, this row must total, so I know I've got 250 that don't. The next part of the problem is that 15% buy only snack foods. So if I go to snacks, so I've got snack food, and that means if we've got 15% buying snack food, we must have some that are not buying snack food. I know 15% buy only snack food. So that means they're not buying milk, they are buying snack food. And, there's, and that's 15% of people total. If I put 150 there, that means there's 100 here. If I have now 65% by snack food in general, that's, well, of this 1,000, there's 650 that buy snack food. And naturally, that would mean 350 don't. So... Um, because this is 60, 650 from the problem, I know 350 is here, and I can get that total. That means also that this is 500. 500 people bought, buy snacks and milk because we know there's 650 total, and only 150 of them are buying snacks and not milk. That also means this needs to be 250 because... For these two, this cell, 250, and this cell, 100, to be 350, this must be 250. So there's our completed contingency table. And now we're asked, was the chance of buying milk assuming you bought snacks? So I need to decide from that statement which of the two parts of it is my assumption. What's the thing that we're taking to be true? What's the subset of the universe we're focusing on? And what is the part that we're asking the chance of or the probability of? So in this sentence, I am assuming I bought snacks. So that means I'm going to look at the snack food row only. I'm asking the chance of buying milk. So that means I need to know uh, of the 650 people that bought snacks, how many of them also bought milk? So I take 500. I divide by 650, and that's the answer. Now, um, I could also ask, say, um, what's the chance of uh, snacks assuming milk? That would be a different question. So this is the answer to this one up here, and now we can ask this different question. So snacks assuming milk, assuming milk, snacks is 500, so 500 divided by 750, you get that. So just something to notice, if I assume you bought snacks, and I ask the chance you have milk, it's a different number than assuming you buy milk 
and ask with the chance of buying snacks. Those are two different numbers. Um, and you, um, it's easy to get them turned around. Uh, so you know, you can think of some pretty um, clear examples of things like, you know, what's the chance that, uh, you know, I'm holding the steering wheel if I'm driving, and it's different than the chance that if I'm driving, I'm holding the steering wheel. Uh, you know, so if I, or so if I'm holding the steering wheel, I'm driving. So it's very possible to be sitting in a parked car holding a steering wheel, uh, but it's very unlikely that you're not holding the steering wheel while you're driving. So those are two very different examples. You'll get vastly different probabilities um, because they're stated backwards. All right, now let's do this harder one over here. So we've got of the people who shop at a convenience store. We're back to milk and no milk and snacks and no snacks, so I'll just move that over. And now I want that thousand again. I still have 75% buying milk, so 750 goes here. 250 here. But now I have a different statement. It says 40% of the milk buyers also buy cookies. So this isn't, I mean, so these, here's the milk and cookies people. But this is not 40% of the thousand. This is 40% of milk buyers only. So I need to take 40% and multiply by milk buyers. And that means I know what's here. And I have the second statement. 20% of the buyers who didn't buy milk bought snacks. Cookie, snacks anyway, or cookies or snacks, sorry. And so I've got 20% of the buyers who didn't buy milk. So here's the no milk people. And 20% of those bought snacks. So I take this, multiply by 0.2. And naturally, in here, I'll go the leftovers. Right, this minus this is that. And now I can sum these. And we're happy because these add up. That's this one plus this one equals 1,000. That's a good check to make sure we did it right. So now I can answer this probability question. Um, what is the chance that oh let's see I don't what is the chance of buying milk assuming you bought snacks how about that we'll answer answer the same question so look at the snack row and what the chance of buying milk assuming you bought snacks and we could do the backwards problem we can do snacks assuming milk And that is going to be snacks and milk divided by the total for milk. All right, so the key is to always figure out in that last question sentence, what are the things are you assuming, what are you not? And um, then making sure you divide by the right cells. So in this case, um, you know, this, this number is not one that was, this one was one given in the problem, this one was not. And so there was, which was more work to get here, and that's a good sign in terms of, you know, why, why, would, be, why we would be interested in the answer. So um, that's two contingency table problems solved all the way through. Uh, and um, thanks for your time, and good luck.